As a geologist, it's my job to study rocks. There are many, many different kinds of rocks out there in the world. And I have collected quite a few rocks during my time as a geologist. Here are some of the rocks and minerals from my collection. I have polished these in a special machine called a rock tumbler, which makes them shiny and really brings out the color. In this pile alone, I can see amethyst, tiger's eye, rose quartz, turquoise, and red jasper, agate, unikite, onyx. Oh, sorry, I get carried away sometimes. Minerals are the building blocks of rocks. All rocks contain minerals. Sometimes you can find pure minerals unmixed with other minerals, but most rocks contain several different minerals. There are over 3,000 different types of minerals and scientists still discover new ones from time to time. Minerals come in all different shapes, sizes, colors, and textures. We use these different characteristics to divide minerals into groups. Some of these mineral groups are quite common, whereas others are very unusual and even difficult to describe. I'll tell you about a few of the best known minerals. For instance, this is a picture of the mineral quartz. Quartz is the most common mineral in the Earth's crust. Not the most common in the whole earth, just the most common mineral in the crust. This picture shows a type of quartz called milky quartz. Quartz comes in many varieties. Those are clear quartz crystals on the top left, and some minerals form into perfect crystals like these, and some don't. It all depends on where and how they are formed within the earth. Crystals can come in all different sizes. Some are small as a pea, some the size of your arm or longer. As for the color variations in different types of quartz, these are largely caused by the addition of very small amounts of various types of metals into the mineral. For instance, the beautiful purple color of amethyst is caused by traces of iron and aluminum metal. Examples of rare gemstones are some varieties of corundum, a mineral composed mostly of aluminum and oxygen. Red corundum is known as ruby and blue corundum is known as sapphire. Rubies and sapphires are among the most beautiful mineral crystals on earth. Here is another beauty. This is called emerald. Emerald is a variety of the mineral beryl, which also comes in many different colors, including green, blue, yellow, and red. Deep green emerald is my favorite. And here is one of the most famous minerals. Do you know what these beauties are called? These are diamonds. A diamond is the hardest mineral in the whole world. A diamond is hard enough to cut through glass or scratch any other minerals. The diamond on the left is a raw diamond, fresh from the earth. A diamond on the right has been cut and polished. The sides of a cut diamond are called facets. You need special equipment and skills to cut and polish diamonds or other gemstones such as rubies and emeralds. People who cut diamonds look through powerful magnifying glasses as they do their work. This is so they can see all the tiny little facets or sides.
Here is one mineral that we use every day. Have you ever heard of salt? Salt, or sodium chloride, is a common mineral that is found in the oceans and in the earth. Sodium chloride is called table salt when we use it in food, rock salt when we use it to make roads safer during winter storms. Some people put table salt on food to make it taste better. In fact, salt is an extremely important nutrient for people as well as animals. Your body needs salt. Not too much, but just enough. Too much salt is bad for you. If you eat too much salt, your body will tell you so because you will feel thirsty. Salt appears in many forms in nature. Rock salt can be found in the form of halite crystals, like the rectangular-shaped crystal pictured on the left in the image. You can't see salt in water because it dissolves, but you'll know it's there if you ever taste ocean water. Why do all these different minerals look the way they do? Each has its own story and it gets pretty complicated, but you can bet that there were three basic things in common. Heat, pressure, and time. These three factors play a role in the formation of every mineral. An important thing to remember about the rocks you find in nature is that you should leave them there so that other people can also enjoy them. If every person took even one rock, there soon would not be very many rocks left. Without rocks, environments change dramatically. If the environment changes, the plants and animals that live there might have a hard time finding food and shelter. Now I've told you a bit about some of my favorite minerals. Take a look at the ground the next time you go outside and you might actually see something interesting.